Greetings YouTube, I'm Digikai. Last video we encountered a horrible, horrible world of Dragon Ball Evolution for the PSP. Now, I know that only a couple of you watched it, and half of you might not even be human. But if you were unfortunate enough to watch it, or even if you have played the game, you know that the memories can never be erased. So let's move on from Dragon Ball Evolution into another fighting game. But this time, an actual good one. Let's talk Street Fighter. Whether you love it or hate it, you have to admit that Street Fighter was a pioneer to bringing fighting games to home systems. It was one of the first to gain popularity and not only that, but it also gave birth to a whole lot of pissed off gamers. Now, would you even say the word Street Fighter and bad in a sentence that isn't set to or contain the word badass? Well, yes, actually. Believe it or not, Capcom made a Street Fighter game that really pissed off the community. And I'm talking before on this DLC and all that shit came out. These games aren't even considered Street Fighter, but surprisingly enough, these games shaped up what Street Fighter is today. If you haven't caught my drift yet, I'm talking about Street Fighter the movie and Street Fighter E at Street. Now, I learned my lesson with movie games, and also considering they casted a Belgian to play an all-out American badass hero, I'm going to go with the other one, Street Fighter E at Street. Talk about a game with mixed reactions. The fans hated it, but some people loved it. Now I'm here to give games a second chance, so why the hell not try it again? I had this game when I was a child, and to tell you the truth, I don't remember much about it. But the fact that it was annoyingly addicting, and I mean coke mixed with heroin and hookers type of addiction, I couldn't stop till all the characters were along. For the means of this review, and also to keep my sanity, we're not going to get much into it. Now, to give it a little credit, it was one of the launch titles for the PS2, so there wasn't anything at the time to compare it to. That is, until a year later and Tekken 4 came out, which the graphics on that made this game look like a calculator. One unfortunate thing of being a launch title was that this game was extremely rushed, to the point where it might even stand on Sonic 06 standards. But let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's get it on with Street Fighter EX3. So after you pass the opening, which at first glance might look like it's poorly made, it's actually cooler than I expected it to be. Even though it does look pretty rushed, and I know this was their first time working with PS2 technology, but if they tried harder, I think they would have kicked enough to bring a decent opening. After you pass the title screen, you get two modes to go through, Arena and Original. Now what's so original about Original? Well, the fact that you begin facing three douches of your choice. And at the end of the match, you can get the last one you defeated to your team. Now, this is one of the things that Street Fighter EX3 brought to the table. And yeah, believe it or not, it, this was the first Street Fighter game that wasn't a crossover game to feature tags. And not only that, the fact that it's in 3D makes it the first of its kind. Now, does it work? Well, sort of. Now the 3 on 1 is pretty cool for its kind, but eventually gets really cheap and to the point where you don't know what the hell is going on. However, they did try to fix that by making this game ridiculously easy. Now, after the 3 on 1 match, you get now what you're more familiar with. That is, the 1 on 1 tag in tag out matches. Now to give it a little credit, this does work, being the first of its kind. And I even dare to say that Tekken Tag took this as inspiration. There's definitely multiple ways of teaming up together and screwing the other player over. Now this is why this caught on, and not the gang rape you don't know what the hell's going on mode. This original mode, like the arcade mode, has its bosses. 
and actually bosses this time. This particular mode has three. This sexy beast that I can only describe as the best Street Fighter character ever made. And Saget and Bison. Why I consider him the best Street Fighter character ever made? Well first of all look at him. He's just a fucking badass. He has knives that appear out of nowhere, he's fast and he has one of the best moves ever. Not only that, but he's like a human sized vibrator. Who the hell doesn't love that? Why isn't he featured in any other Street Fighter game? I mean come on, I wanna see this dude in that Street Fighter game, I wanna see him actually being used, I wanna see him go big. Now the other bosses well they're as easy as this one, really not giving you that much trouble. And since you have your partners with you, it's actually more easier than you would think, since you can use all three of them on Bison. However they did try to make it challenging, not refilling your partner's health. Which really doesn't make it that challenging. Uh, you can practically knock your three of your partners out and you'll still have your full health since they do replenish your health. However, I played this game on normal difficulty. If normal is this easy, then I can't even imagine how hard it is. Holy shit, talk about a sudden change in difficulty. Normal is easy, but hard is almost impossible. I said almost because if you get used to it, it's actually really tolerable compared to other Street Fighter games. It gives you a challenge and it makes the game kind of replayable to some extent. The character endings are pathetic. And sorry, but to be honest, that's what it was. I mean, come on, you chose you had potential in doing cutscenes, sort of. But you resort to one big paragraph on the ending. That's just pure laziness. Even Dragon Ball Evolution had the courtesy of giving us cutscenes. <laughs> well, that was original mode. Let's try arena mode. And arena mode was just a really fancy name for verses. Wow, did I mention this game was rushed? Cause it really looks like it. Arena mode, or versus mode, gives you the option of playing tag battles, dramatic battles, which is an odd name for 3 on 1. And team battles. If you play Tekken then you know what I'm talking about. Sits on sits, one on ones type of crap. And that's pretty much it for Street Fighter EX 3. What could have potentially be a great game is ruined by Capcom rushing to get this out as a launch title. The team focused on the original mode but lacked to have other modes like an actual one on one arcade mode for example. The stages lack, only containing about 5 for the sole purpose of filling the original mode. Now this game does have a character creation mode, which only customizing moves and characters already made for you. All of these potential features could have made a worthy Street Fighter game, and it would have welcomed the series to the PS2. However, the fact that many of these things were rushed, and they didn't have time to polish the game, made it a big disappointment in the last attempt at 3D. Until Street Fighter 4 came and believe it or not, it did take elements from this. You could say this was their prototype, their testing grounds for Street Fighter 4. Now at the end of the day, is this game really bad? Well no, it's actually alright. It's a solid fighting game that I think most casual gamers would like. Now I wouldn't recommend it to hardcore Street Fighter fans because they completely erased this game from existence. But if you're a fan of fighting games and would like to know where most things were inspired, I would definitely try this game. I'm Digikai, and I'm still suffering from Dragon Ball Evolution. God, what a horrible game. Digikai out.